In video one, we saw how the electrolysis injury sets off the mast cells. The mast cells release chemical mediators into the skin that initiate the healing process. We saw how one of these chemicals, histamine, increases blood flow to the area and stimulates the neutrophils and monocytes, which are both white blood cells. Now, let's continue the saga and see how macrophages, fibroblasts, and angiogenesis function in wound healing. Let's focus a bit more on this process. The smallest of blood vessels are capillaries and venules. Capillaries carry fresh blood to the cells, and the venules that are connected to the capillaries carry away the nutrient-deficient blood back to the veins. This illustration shows a normal tiny blood vessel, a capillary, or a venule. Here's the same blood vessel reacting to the chemical mediator histamine. All the white cells become stimulated and wiggle out of the vessel so they can enter the wound site and scavenge for bacteria, viruses, and dead tissues. The neutrophils are first on the scene, but they die after devouring bacteria. But not so the monocytes. These white cells also gobble up unwanted materials, but what they do is miraculous. The monocytes, which are also leukocytes or white blood cells, gobble up unwanted material too. But as they do this, amazing changes occur in the cell. As they replicate, they transform into macrophages. Now, the fantastic macrophage takes over and becomes a true superstar of the healing process. There was a film made in the 1950s called The Blob. The Blob was a big lump of jelly that creeped around and digested everybody it touched. The movie was a perfect depiction of the macrophage. Again, the term macrophage is Greek. Macro means big, and phage means eating. Thus, this is the big eating cell. As you can see, I've colored it blue. Macrophages are found throughout the body. They hunt down and digest all sorts of invaders. In order to increase the numbers of the big eaters at the wound site, the monocytes transform into macrophages. And thus, within a couple days, a virtual army of macrophages have assembled to accelerate the healing process. Macrophages don't seem to have any particular shape. They take on a whole range of crazy appearances as they squiggle around in your tissues. In your research, you will encounter the term phagocyte. This term defines all cells that eat and digest foreign invaders in your body. Of course, the term is Greek. Phago meaning to eat and site meaning a cell. Thus, you have an eating cell. And topping the list of all the phagocytes is the big daddy monster of them all, the macrophage. In the skin, the macrophages move around like amoebas. They change shape, push off, fasten themselves to tissues, and slither around. It's sort of creepy to think we have these hideous-looking things in our body, and we have billions of them. Here's a macrophage attacking a bacterium. It stretches out to engulf the poor thing and surrounds it in a vacuole or opening. Notice the yellow lysosomes within the macrophage. These are tiny bundles that contain digestive enzymes. The vacuole is also called a phagosome or a container where the material will be digested. Now the lysosomes enter the phagosome and release the digestive enzymes and destroy the invader. The macrophage then excretes the digested waste in a process called exocytosis. But this substance is not wasted because the next big player, the fibroblast, absorbs these waste chemicals and uses it in the next big episode of healing. The fibroblast cells are the most common cells found in the dermis. Described as spindle-shaped, these cells produce collagen, connective tissues, and support substances. Collagen, of course, is made up of strong protein molecules that form long supportive ribbons in the dermis, sometimes called sticky ribbons. Leather, for example, is primarily collagen. I've colored this cell yellow throughout the presentation. Think of this cell as a spinning cell. 
almost like a spider. In this case, your fibroblasts are spinning long threads of collagen fibers. Here's a photo of fibroblasts in the dermis. I've colored them yellow. In most cases, the fibroblasts are somewhat inactive. However, inflammation fires up the fibroblasts and gets them working to form new collagen. When a cell is inactive, it's called a fibrocyte. Fibro meaning fibers and site meaning a cell. The term fibroblast represents fibro or fibers and the term blast means a cell that has become highly active. Thus a fibroblast is an active cell that's making fibers. In electrology, fibroblasts become highly active and fill the wound area with fresh new collagen. By the way, all skin rejuvenation processes are designed to create inflammation in the skin by firing up the fibroblasts to produce new collagen. Such processes as chemical peels, laser resurfacing, microdermabrasion, and even Retin-A are based on starting up the new collagen process by initiating an inflammatory response. So again, please understand that inflammation is a good thing in wound healing. Amazingly, if there are not enough fibroblasts in the wounded area, new fibroblasts form from stem cells that are located near tiny capillaries and other blood vessels. In this way, the wound site gets fully populated with fibroblasts. The last process I'm going to talk about is angiogenesis. The term, of course, is Greek. Angio means a vessel, and genesis means to give birth to. So the term angiogenesis simply means the growth of new blood vessels. In this illustration, the blood vessel is way out of proportion by thousands, but it's big to illustrate the point. In actuality, there would be many hundreds of microscopic capillaries feeding the follicle. So boom, you destroy the follicle and obliterate the blood vessels too. In milliseconds, the blood vessels are sealed off, both coagulated by your treatment and clotted by the blood platelets. The term for this destroyed area that you just created is the dead space. So now what? The vessels need to bridge the wound gap, but how is this accomplished? Okay, so finally, let's see how these cells interact. This explanation will go from left to right. So here goes. The white area on the left is the dead space that you just created with electrolysis. All the cells are dead and bacteria has entered the area. The dead space is oxygen deficient because there's no blood flow. However, the macrophages, those little blue guys, are stimulated and they're highly active when there is a depletion of oxygen. So they get to work gobbling up bacteria and dead tissues. The macrophages excrete the digested substances and the fibroblasts, those little yellow cells, absorb it and use it. At first, the fibroblasts produce a thick coat of gel-like substance, or gel collagen. That's the green textured layer I painted in. This thick gel allows the capillary to grow sprouts that will become capillary loops. These loops will eventually fill the entire dead follicle. The gel collagen is important because the capillary loops are extremely thin the capillary walls are only one cell thick. Without this thick supportive gel, the capillary loop would burst from arterial blood pressure. And the capillary is pushing out these loops as fast as possible because all the healing mechanisms depend on the blood, nutrients, and oxygen from the capillary. Behind the capillary, another macrophage is also feeding a fibroblast and this one is already laying down layers of collagen bands called wound collagen. The capillary buds move out, but can only proceed within the gel collagen. The dead space, actually the entire dead follicle, fills with gel collagen, and the capillary buds eventually join up to bridge the injured area. In the next video, all of these processes will come together in the wound module. Once established, this wonderful process is unstoppable and eventually produces clear, 
beautiful skin that's now free of unwanted hair. Soon a website will be available with free documents to accompany each video. If you wish to contact me, here's my email address.